Shalom, and welcome to our continuing series on all the colors of the rainbow. Today we are going to talk about the color purple. And I know that it is uh, called indigo, if we count through the, uh, through the colors as we know them in English. Uh, but I believe that the color that is referred to is purple. And in Hebrew, the word is argaman. Exodus 25, 4. And blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair, a common combination for the different uh, curtains and hangings that are in the uh, Mishkan, in the tabernacle in the wilderness. Numbers 4, 13. And they shall take away the ashes from the altar and spread a purple cloth thereon. From Proverbs 31:22, she maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Talking about the Eshet Chayil. Now we know that this color dye comes from this snail in the ocean, which is called Murex trunculus. We're going to watch a short piece of a video showing how the dye comes out of the snail. As you know, the purple dye is associated with royal garments and things that are very expensive. And when you see how the dye comes out of the snail, you'll understand why. Uh, the URL for watching the whole YouTube video is posted here. It's actually a three-part series on the Chila Zone. We talked last time about the, where the dye for the Techelet comes from, the blue. And some people believe that it actually comes from the same animal as the uh, indigo dye, the, this purple dye, um, it just depends on the processing, whether the processing is in the sun or not. Anyway, when you see uh, how this comes out, you'll understand why it's so expensive. We're going to repeat the process of how they did it three, 4,000 years ago, but not only that, but in this very same place where this was done at Tel Dor. Here we have uh, the trunculus. Inside, uh, you have like the kind of worm, the snail inside the shell. Uh -huh. Right about here, on the back of the worm, there's what they call the hypobranchial gland. Right. That's where the dye is stored, and that's right. what we're going to get to. So we're going to try to break that open now. Now you break it right at that point. Right at that point. And here you can see. There it is. You see that? This whole yellow, yellowish mm -hmm. land. That's that's what we need. That's where the dye is stored. Okay. Just that that yellowish gland. There. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. We'll take this off. Okay. Now inside the gland, there's this kind of a clear liquid, which when exposed to air, and the enzymes that are also in the gland will change the clear precursors of the dye into the dye itself and you'll see this getting mm -hmm. reddish purplish blue in a few uh, in a few does seconds. it need the sunlight too well some of the literature says it does some uh -huh. of it says it doesn't <laughs> so i don't know the answer to that question well, here we'll do it from the side. that's all the, from that's the that's the, that's the whole, whole gland oh, yeah, that's that's not the yellow yeah. part but just a little right thing so up do it again yeah, we'll just do another one. Okay. Can you see? Yeah. Oh, there you that's see the beautiful. Gland, right? now, now, now I see very clearly the gland. So. You see that? This whole area here. Well, I might as well try to cut it out. There you go. Just this gland. That over whole here. thing. Just the little dark part. Right. Exactly right. That whole thing. Yeah. Now that's you got it. Yellow. That's good. Yeah. And just put it right down. Finger. Gonna happen. No, just your fingers will turn blue. Finger will turn blue? There it is. That's the gland. That's right. That part. Now you can already see, yeah, in a few seconds, turn. this is already turning. You can't eat this? People all along the Mediterranean eat them. And we've asked that they give the remainders of these snails to the poor people in Jerez to eat. Also, I've just read recently that derivatives of these chemicals are used in leukemia. The word argaman, uh, we can associate with two different roots. 
The first of these is a rag, and it has to do with woven work with weaving. Exodus 28:32, And there shall be a hole in the top of it, in the midst thereof, it shall have a binding of woven work round about the whole of it, as it were the whole of a haberdashon, that it be not rent. Talking about the priest's garment, the neckline around the priest's garment. Judges 16.13 And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web, well, he lied to her again. I believe this root, a rug, this weaving, is where our word rug comes from. Again in Second Kings 23.7, And he brake down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of Yahweh, where the women wove hangings for the grove. Isaiah 59.5, They hatch cockatrices' eggs, and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Now I see this word used in an interesting place, and I believe it speaks to a certain ramification about weaving. Isaiah 38.12 My age is departed, and is removed from me as a shepherd's tent. I have cut off like a weaver my life, he will cut me off with pining sickness, and from day even to night will you make an end of me. So the author is looking at his life as some kind of weaving, and the shuttle's going back and forth and back and forth. And at the end of the of the end of his life, there is a cutting off of that fabric from the loom. And so that's the cutting off he's talking about at the end of his life, how his life is like this woven tapestry and cut off like a weaver would cut off a fabric from a loom. The other root that we're going to look at is ragam. And this root is uh, used as a verb in terms of casting stones or throwing stones to stone somebody. Leviticus 20:27. 20, a man also or woman that hath a familiar spirit or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. And every time that this verb, uh, ragam, is used to indicate stoning somebody to death, it is always used with the word evan, which is the word for stone. Number, numbers 15.36 And all the congregation brought him without the camp and stoned him with stones. And he died, as Yahweh commanded Moses, uh, for the man picking up sticks on Shabbat. The idea behind ragam is the idea of throwing something forward, casting something forward. And that's why we always see the word uh, evan used with it. So two related words we see, and the, each one of them is only used once, the word margema, which comes from this root in Proverbs 26, 8, as he that bindeth a stone in a sling, so is he that giveth honor to a fool. So the sling is the implement that's being used to cast forth that rock, to throw it in a direction. In Psalm 68, 27, we see another word that comes from this root, which is rigma, and it's variously translated. We're going to take a look at it. There is little Benjamin with their ruler, the princes of Judah, and their council, the princes of Zvulun and the princes of Naphtali. So that is a King James version, and here it's translated as council. Uh, in the NASB, we see there is Benjamin, the youngest, ruling them, the princes of Judah in their throng, the princes of Zvulun, and the princes of Naphtali. So more the idea of a bunch of people accompanying, going in a direction similar to a pile of stones that would be picked up and thrown at somebody to stone them to death. Here's a people that's coming along. 
going back into the Vulgate, you can see more specifically uh, how this translation is coming along, and it goes back to the idea of the purple fabric being for someone of station, of high rank. And you see in the Latin it says purpura, which is our word, purple. And it's variously translated as all these different things, purple, purple cloth, purple dye, and then high rank, emperorship, grandeur, splendor, finery, a royal dignity, consular dignity, imperial dignity. So this goes back to um, the princes of Judah and all the people who are of station who are walking with him, variously translated as council or throng. I want to look at one cognate root for ragam, and that is rakam, uh, the gimel being uh, substituted by the kof, and these are both uh, glottals in the back of your throat. G is the voiced form, and k is the unvoiced form. It's variously translated as some kind of needlework, or we think about it as embroidery. Exodus 26.36 And thou shalt make a hanging for the door of the tent of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen wrought with needlework. In Psalm 139.15 we see an interesting embellishment on this idea. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. So again, when we're, look, when we're looking at the weaving, we saw Isaiah talking about the man who imagined his life as a weaving on a loom, and when it comes to an end, the fabric of his life is cut off. And here we see that the body and the fabric of life is being embroidered inside the mother's womb. So in both cases, either the arag shows a picture of weaving and also the ragam uh, as in relationship to the embroidery, that casting idea, the casting of the shuttle in the loom going back and forth. We see a weaving which is our life. And as we know, as, as it's taught, that we are created to be the temple of God. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? We have an outside fabric of our life. And the, and the idea is that Yeshua, Yahweh, God is supposed to live within us. 2 Corinthians 6.16 and what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. We know that we are woven in the future to be uh, royalty. 1 Peter 2.9 but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And again in Revelation 5.10, And hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Now, in this scene of... Uh, Yeshua on the stake, we see the two things, the two roots again come together. John 19, 2. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and said unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that you may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Yeshua forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said unto them, Behold the man. 
They were trying to make him to be the king. But we see in John 19.23, Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Yeshua, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. And this is the Greek word that is used in every place in, uh, in the Tanakh, where it talks about that arag, that woven verb that description of being woven this is the same word that's used here in john so we see that yeshua's own garment was woven he was woven to be a human being it wasn't his time yet to wear the purple just as it's not our time yet to be the to wear the purple in the future we will be kings and in the future he will also reign as king we have one more color to go um, and it's a secret color, so uh, we'll cover that next time. In the meantime, Testimetahayinayim al Hashemayim. Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.